let's continue in our journey and I'm going to take you to some things that you might have seen before. Maybe this is new to you, maybe not, but hopefully it will inspire you nevertheless. Coming back to why is it doing that? Ah, oh, okay, we'll go here then. <laughs> let's begin at the beginning here. Your success story begins when you found human design. So do you remember, can you go back to that moment when you found human design? Remember who invited you, who recognized you, who asked you, who presented it to you? Did you stumble across it like a three? Was it Ben? Yeah. So who was the one that pulled you in? For me, it was a shaman like Ben, a shaman that I went to that I did uh, 5-MeO, which is a similar substance to DMT. And after my journey, he showed me my human design. And he said, you, he took me by the shoulders when he saw that I was a projector. And he said, you need to know this. That was the beginning of my success story, just coming across this information. And I can remember when I was in that time frame of my life, I was doing everything I could spontaneously and to try and manipulate and distort reality in order to secure my safety and my value, to earn love, to be able to be good enough. And my mind was in this horrible spiral of going in and out of depression constantly uh, to the point where I would even have suicidal ideation about how do I end and get out of this miserable nightmare of a life because I can't do anything wrong, right. I do everything wrong and nobody loves me. That was the story, the tape inside of my head about myself. So the success begins when you actually try to experiment with this particular journey. And that's what I want to invite you to remember because that moment where things shifted for you, if you're here in this room, you know things have shifted because you wouldn't keep studying and experimenting if things didn't shift, if it didn't work somehow, right? So when it started to shift for me was after I started to take the Living Your Design course, okay? So that was um, in 2013, early 2013, I started taking Living Your Design. And I remember being in the store, being in the store with my husband, and he said something. I would, I would listen. I really wouldn't listen very well. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of deafness going on here with all my individual nature. But I heard something from him that I took in a way that meant that I, did, I made a mistake. And I remember my mouth opening saying, I can't do anything right. And immediately my hand flew up to my mouth and my eyes widened with shock because I knew where that voice was coming from. It was from my not self. It was from that wounded little child that was desperately trying to seek validation, love and approval from doing everything right. Good girl. Yeah. Trying to be a good girl and projecting that onto my current relationship with my now husband. So the power of this system, I need to turn that off for Sundays because I've changed my day off here. The power of the system is that it's going to help you really understand how you personally, not just you helping others, but every time you teach this material, it's going to sink in at a deeper level because you are speaking from your own validation of personal experience. That's one of the things I desire for each of you is that you do not read wrote on a slide. You need to speak this from the experience of living it. So in our journey together, we're going to share our experiences so that we can start to label and, and name some of these pieces, these aspects, and give each other different fragments of, of what, how it could show up when it wakes up. Because let's say you come through this class and you have a defined heart center and you have no idea there's a disconnect when it comes to value and lack of worth because you don't understand that you're going to need to learn from somebody else how to frame that to somebody who has this. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> Marlene changed your life. Yeah. For the people who this sticks with, that they actually commit themselves to the experience, it freaking changes everything. I'm a dramatically different person than I was eight years ago. So that's my hope for you is that 
remember when you found human design and get inspired by the power this process has for you in this life. And in the beginning, let's see here. I don't know why I'm not. Ah, that's what's going on. Present. It'll work better if you present, Lavina. <laughs> so in the beginning, we found human design. We know it's the science of differentiation. We know that somebody labeled this Maya of ours and gave us simple keys. Now those simple keys, type, strategy, authority, and everything that comes with it, it's all been distilled down into something that people can experiment with. So again, no power trip. This is not about telling somebody what they have to do. It is about giving them the power to make their own decisions for themselves. So if at any point somebody really has a hard time with this and they leave you, they leave your practice, they go, no, this is not for me. I want you to remember not to take it personally because it's either for somebody or not. This is not for everybody. For me, yes, I became somebody who is a leader in the human design system because that is my design. I am designed to be a role model and a spokesperson for this system. And I don't want you to ever compare yourself to anybody else, certified or not. Everybody is on their own perfect journey for themselves. And you are the perfect person for the people that come to you. Okay? Um, oh. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. There we go. I'm having a hard time with my presentation today. There we go. So here on this slide, one of the things that I offer you is that I have gone through all of the BG5 foundations repeatedly, the BG5 certification program repeatedly. I've taken OC16 once. That's each of those is a year long program. And the thing that I want to help you do is learn how you're here to be a successful professional. So that's also part of the coaching program of the training to make sure that you leverage yourself in the right place and the right time, of course, according to your strategy and authority, but that you set yourself up for success because understanding these important keys, and this is one of the things I'm going to include for you is your BG5 um, information. Understanding these important keys to how you're here to be successful, whether it be in a small or large group, whether it be in partnership, whether it be individual, like what is your role? That's what I want to get you to get really clear about so that you can be successful in your way, in your way. Because in the business of human design, the moment you stop being in control of your life, your life is perfectly financed for you, for you. Opening the door to your true self means that you are doing what's right for you, not comparing yourself to anybody else and not trying to follow in anyone's footsteps, even mine. It's not about following. It is about leading through your own example, your own example. Human design is not for everyone. It can't be. It'll never be for everyone. It's only for those who are ready. That readiness is a serendipity. It's a door opening slightly. It's the moment of possibility, that moment of being able, truly, you're going in a different direction. This is a freaky system. You know, it is not uh, that homogenized like everything else, as you know. It's time to go a different way. We only have seven years left. It's time to go the way of ourselves, what we are as beings, nine centered beings. Seven years, the clock changes. We have a different background frequency that is already starting to be felt. And the world needs this, particularly children. We have our youngest BG5 student in the world right now, 13 years old. And BG5 is for kids. Anybody under 30, oh my God, is it so powerful. Human design is for children. So it's really fa fabulous that you guys are here and that you're contemplating entering into this as a profession. Well, <laughs> you know this if you've been studying and experimenting, that there's no return once you know this knowledge and once you actually validate it for yourself. The only way is to surrender to your own process. So I remember that first time I witnessed my mind's lies, I just shared it with you, that I said I can't do anything right. And the only thing that stopped me from believing that story and smelting into a little puddle in the middle of the shopping, the shopping center floor was that my mind thinks I'm not good enough. 
and that came from an undefined heart center that came from trauma, childhood abuse, and that it is not me and that it is not true. So this is part of the power that you're here to um, empower people to go through, you know, that you are giving people some tool technique that's going to help them not follow in the not self mind's footsteps. You can't give up once this happens. It's like it's a virus that unlocks your potential because you can't unlearn what you learn through human design. And Marlene is sharing, sharing, no, no return. My generator voice now is so loud. I cannot not do anymore what is, isn't meant for me. Exactly. Exactly. You cannot force yourself to do something that is not correct for you anymore once you have unlocked your authority, the power of your authority. Now here's a quote from Ra that I really enjoy, I want to share with you. A living your design teacher is a guide to awakenness. Living design is a great trip. It used to be called living design, now it's your design. Because your responsibility as the guide is that you're here to help wake people up. This isn't about training them as professionals. This living your design is the only spiritual course you'll find in all of human design. It is about uh, helping people to wake up. They might not wake up, but they might see like I did that not self mind story and be able to shatter through that illusion and never again cry in public or private about not being good enough. That is such a beautiful gift. Just even that one center to give that to somebody. Mind isn't for turning off. Here in human design, we make mind our servant. It's for aligning, to align, correcting. We have beautiful, great minds, beautiful things, but the mind is not there to be enemy for your life, your enemy for life. It isn't. It's here to serve. It is here to express you. It is about providing our outer authority to other people, our differentiated, unique perspective and voice. And in that communion, the most beautiful interactions can happen if we're two differentiating perspectives instead of two homogenized um, echo chambers, which is what you'll find a lot out there instead of people specifying uniquely what their personal experience is. Okay, so you want to teach from your form, from your experience. If at any point you don't know the answer, say, that's a great question. Let me get back to you and learn to look into and be okay with not knowing because you won't have all the answers. It's not about providing the answers. It's about shifting the perspective to get them in touch with their form. The human design system is a form knowledge. It is about connecting us with our source. We are part of this mother earth and it is in with, it is within our integrity to be aligned to whatever our type is. On this slide, you can see the manifested uh, channels, which are our manifested strengths, which are the direct energy of energy to the throat of the manifester we have our generated strengths our generated traits that are about responding and then we have all of our projected energies here each of these energies show up uniquely in each of your clients and each of them needs to tr be treated individually so this is one of the pitfalls to remember to watch out for is not to judge when somebody is presenting something to you. Of course, have boundaries, but do not judge if they're starting to project. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. I have nine fifth lines, so I get projected on a lot. And sometimes anger or bitterness or frustration gets projected onto you when really people are just frustrated or bitter or angry with themselves and they don't know what to do with that energy. So always look on your clients with compassion and care and recognize, get in touch with your own humanity of what you remember going through when you were at the beginning of this experiment, when everything's landing on you, all this information, and maybe they're getting really heady and they're like, oh, fascinated, I have to learn this and that and getting all lost in the lines and the gates and the colors and the details and you need to pull them back out of that and get in touch with their form instead of up in the headspace. Yeah, pull them back into their response if they're a generator, their emotions if they're emotionally defined, 
their voice, if they are there to listen to their own voice, turn it back around on them and make them the experts of them. And anytime you see the not self displaying, it's not pointing out the not self and saying, you're not self. That's not helpful because the not self gets very um, defensive and triggered if you're trying to do things in a way that comes from this power over instead of power with. You're here to empower your clients depending on how your design is designed to operate. You might be here to share in order to empower. You might be here to support in order to empower. You might be here just to be with and witness and not fix it for the other person. You really can't fix it for them. So that's something important. Don't take on too much from your clients. When you shift from a student to a teacher, it means that you're now starting to learn with your students by walking the path with them. When you walk the path with them, now you become partners in the transformation that happens rather than I'm better than because I've been there, done that, listen to me. That's power. You don't need that. This is, you know, this is what I've heard or this is my experience and what's it like for you? Okay, this is an important piece to watch out for. Not playing the power struggle or power games. Yeah, not lording it over the other person because they're further behind on the path. Now that's another point. When you are slightly ahead on a path, you can turn around and reach out a helping hand and help them up. You do not have to have it all figured out. In fact, it is not, absolutely not about having any of this all figured out. It is about embodiment. So in your embodiment, you elevate the frequency of the other being just by being present. Not about using words necessarily. Maybe you can, maybe you do have the gift for that. But some of us who have an undefined throat, maybe it is about your presence, your state of being. When you're with that other person, witnessing their process and holding their highest and best alignment to source as a vision for the dynamic of the two of you, okay? They can only, you can only meet them where they're at and they can only go to where you're holding space for them. So this becomes a dance, not just of, you know, you providing a frame of human design, but it becomes a harmony, a synthesis, a resonance, a vibration, a song. It becomes a song between the two of you. You're singing the song of their design. You're pointing out the shadows or the missteps and mistakes. You're loving it up, all of it. It's never about good, bad, right, wrong. And you're providing maybe hope, maybe leadership, maybe desire, maybe a sense of um, passion or longing or yearning for something better, whatever it is that your design is here to give, you're going to give it to that other person exactly the way that it needs to be given in the dynamic. So trust yourself. You have to dedicate yourself to actually living this knowledge at this point. It's about learning through experience and it is not about the mind space. Although in this course, I'm going to give you a lot of mind stuff because you, you need to know a lot in order to handle a lot of the different scenarios that your students are going to bring you because, oh my God, are they going to bring you all kinds of questions and scenarios and observations for you? Observe their process intently for whatever your design is correct for. Question. Actually really pay attention and ask questions to understand or comprehend where they're coming from. Make sure that you really get what they're asking. Listen deeply and also have compassion for yourself and for the other. If you're having a difficult time with that client, have compassion for yourself and say, hey, you know, um, this particular piece, this isn't, I'm feeling like I'm not getting you here. Can we try something else? Can we do this instead? Can I refer you to somebody else? I've done that multiple times, four times in my practice where it just wasn't working and I had to say, you know what, here's your money. We need to make sure that you're served in the highest and best way possible. Can you go see such and such or so and so? I imagine that they would really be able to help you because there's some resonance there or I really know that other person and I trust that they're going to be able to take this person and help them where maybe I couldn't. So it's not a failing if you need to have boundaries with someone and say, hey, no, 
we're not going in the direction that I recognize is healthy for either of us. And let's have compassion and let's break the bond. Hi, third line, break the bond with what is not working. That's my third line um, process. Okay, what doesn't work? Now in our course, I need you to comprehend the centers utterly. You need to know them by the back, like the back of your hand at this point. You may not know all of the gates and their names yet, but at this point, centers have got to be, you know the type of center that it is, you know the kind of center that it is, you know its function, you know what the, the streams or the circuitry is that's going through there. And again, if you need some remedial work, I'm happy to help you by going through my courses that are foundational. If you, have, if you haven't taken with me, if they've taken them with me, go back, watch, practice, play. Okay, because you need to get good at understanding the frequencies of each of these centers and their functions. Okay, that's what my most important um, thing is for living your design guides is because we are dealing so much with the centers being aligned or not, with being in a healthy state or not. So that's part, a lot of the uh, work that we're going to do is make sure that you're really on point with your centers. Like I was mentioning earlier, they're going to learn from your auric example, from your frequency. Remember that your aura does the talking. Your aura talks way more and communicates way more than the actual words that you use. One of my favorite quotes from Ra that I remind myself of all the time because I made this mistake. Human design, learning human design, is not the same as living it. Actually having the theory is not the same as actually putting it into practice. So that's the most important thing at this point. If you're going to become a guide, you can't teach anybody unless you learned, you've learned the helplessness and choicelessness. Now I'm speaking from the mind's process, the conditions mind's process. Once that mind can be disassociated from the job of being in charge of the life, once you can learn to put your mind in its place, learn to have it do what it needs to do, which is measure, sort, compare, study, research, and all that stuff, conceptualization process of out there, not in here. Once you've done that, you've made the shift. So do you guys know what I mean when I say you've made the shift? Have you made the shift yet? Can I tell you what happened to me that really helped me make the shift? Just going to check in with you guys. To make the shift. Yes, Marlene, at one moment you also arrive at the point where you are at peace with the mind. Yes, yes. And to get that, my process was I would have these repeated, because I'm emotional, emotional experiences. And in those emotional experiences, that's when the mind gets really loud because it's trying to help. It's trying to justify, rationalize, identify, make somebody wrong, good, bad, right, you know, so that it can try to control the situation instead of surrendering to it. So I would see my mind's distortion in my emotional states. Maybe I was plotting revenge or how I'm going to get back control or whatever it happens to be. Okay. So when I get to that state of seeing, seeing the mind's perspective, like you said, there's this moment where you can arrive at a place where you recognize what it is and you don't put any value on what it says about yourself. That's the key. Do not put value on what your mind story is about yourself, particularly if it's spiraling you down in, into even an ever worse state. It does not know the truth. It cannot. It always thinks in black and white. Good, bad, right, wrong, left, right, up, down, all of that. It only does that. It is not the composite of everything that you are. It's just mind. It's just talking. It's not true particularly when you're in an unhappy uh, state and you're, put, you're finding, you're trying to find somebody to put the blame on, either yourself or the other. So yeah, finding at peace with the mind means surrendering. Your body graph is a multidimensional map of 
what your genetic potential is. It's multidimensional, just like you are. I love this image from Human Design Canada he gave to me before they uh, closed their, their business. You can see that there is these, there are these elements of multidimensionality, not just flat piece of paper. So remember that. That's why I put these in here and remember that. Human design is a reading. The human design system is a reading of your genetic code. Now with a human design education, your genetic code can be read in detail. That is the work of a professional analyst. The ability to detail our mechanics, obviously, it's profound. It's amazing. It reveals the complete nature in its subtleties. However, and here's where we come in, by simply grasping the surface mechanic, what this work aspires to communicate, you will have a grounding in this life that is immediately going to bring a difference in your process. So it's just about establishing the nature of their being you don't have to go into the details, although you might see me uh, do that in some of my classes with people where we're getting down to the fundamentals and what's at the core of things. But really where the power all is, is on the surface. So really get the surface, get the dynamics of how everything works on the surface so that you can understand how to unlock their genetic potential. And we are in this together. I am in this together with you. You're in this together with your clients. It's all a one unit. So we are here to be partners in your success. I keep saying we because I do not work alone. I've had a team of people with me for years and we want to be able to partner in your success to offer support, camaraderie, learning, sharing, and growing together. And you'll meet some of these people that I work with uh, in this course. You're going to need to know 70% more than your students. 70% more than the basic newcomer. Now that's going to shift depending on who's coming to you. If you're a projector and you enter into this experience, you're going to find that the projectors that come to you usually will have been studying for a while on their own because they love data. They love systems. They're going to be looking at as much as possible. They're usually pretty thrifty and they will determine through looking for who Will, they'll resonate with ideally they'll come to you as a projector because projectors really need a lot of time in this and they really need to know from somebody else who's been in it a bit longer as a projector now if you're a generator you really want to know yourself and and serve those fellow generators because that's most of the planet and that's who you are most resonant and vibrating of a frequency of right now you might find because of your fractal nature, you have a lot more manifestors that come to you or a lot more reflectors. Some people are like, why do I have so many reflectors in my life? And other people are like, I don't see any. It's really dependent on who recognizes and asks you. But when they come to you, you need to be prepared. You need to know more. And if you don't know, then go ahead and refer. Say, I need to come back and check it out. Let, let's, let's, let's research this, let's, let's investigate. And then. When you do find that answer, you're more likely to remember it because that was something that was maybe a missing puzzle piece that you didn't have. Now you have additional, um, I keep wanting to say energy. You have additional resources, there it is, resources to be able to serve your clients. All learning, real learning takes seven years. We move in seven year cycles. We grow in seven year cycles. Ross says it takes seven years to change approximately all the cells of the body. We live in that seven year cycle. The moment that you begin to come to your own nature, the moment that you allow your body to live its life without resistance, you begin a deep process of deconditioning. Seven years later, you emerge quite literally as a new being yourself. Now that's not to say that the deconditioning ever ends at seven years because we're always being conditioned. But in that seven year cycle, which is going to operate in kind of like a spiral, the way that you come around to new you know, experiences of the things that you're learning and new developments and new growth potentials, there is this halfway mark of about three and a half years that really is a marker for what's happening within you. 
So I want to encourage you, if you don't feel ready yet to take this work out into the world, pay attention to your strategy and authority. If people keep coming to you and say, hey, I want to learn this from you, do you know it yet? And your authority says yes, you might be starting to teach before that three and a half or seven year cycle. That's okay, because you're going to get exactly who's right for you. Whoever that person comes to, we all get what we deserve, what we need for that moment. And maybe you might make a few missteps in, in talking about things, but you will give them the best of you, which is your true self. Because we always give each other our definition. Okay, we always give each other our definition. In interaction with each other, our definition is what we literally put out there for the other person to amplify. So can you see how it, you don't have to be any different than what you already are? You are exactly perfect as you are for the people that are going to come to you. Okay, you don't have to have, this is, I'm, I'm prepping you a little bit so that you don't feel like you have to be perfect before you hang your shingle. It just has to be correct. It does have to be, and this is going to help you this process of living your design as a teacher now. Knowing yourself from the ground up, boy, is this the most revealing work because every time you go through that presentation, I've done it a lot of times now, I've lost count, but every time you do that presentation, you're going to, you know, your perspective on it is going to get into sink into a deeper and deeper knowing of how it shows up for you and where are your personal maybe pitfalls or shadows or missteps where are your weaknesses your vulnerabilities your neediness or whatever have you this is going to help you this knowing yourself from the ground up now one of the things to recognize with your clients is that they're usually going to come to you in a deep state of not self in his professional work, what Ross says, I have given between five and 6,000 individual readings, design analyses, wherever that has been, and regardless of culture or country, there's one prevailing disease. It's called self-hatred. Self-hatred varies in intensity from being just below the surface of consciousness to being full-blown. I hate myself. I had a client come to me recently who would say, you know, in, in my head, I'm always saying, I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. It is the most human of ironies that self-hatred is truly misplaced because these people do not know themselves. They're hating the wrong person, disappointed with the wrong person, dissatisfied with the wrong person because obviously they're misidentifying with the not self mind. We need you to master your mechanics so that you really clearly recognize your own not self mind and you do not for a moment give it any of the validation, justification, rationalization that it's looking for in order to control or manipulate your decision making process. Okay? It is not about having a need for looking like you're right or that you have it all together. And this is a common misstep that I see with people. People say, well, who am I to be out there saying this stuff? I don't even know how to live my design yet. Well, who are you to judge yourself and the integrity of your being? Because that mind inside of yourself that says, who am I, who am I, who am I? That's not you. That's not you. And all of us can be an outer authority for others. All of us can provide a unique perspective. So if there's someone in your life that's asking and you have the ability to deliver, who are you to judge they're asking? Yeah? The recognition projector generator, it goes both ways. Okay? The asking, it goes both ways. Now, I really want to have higher standards for you to know your stuff. My personal slogan has changed to precise advice for leadership success because that's one of the people that I'm here for. I'm here to develop leaders. I am a leader myself. I'm color three, desire motivated, and I'm here to help you accept your role in leadership, whatever it happens to be for you. All of us have leadership lines or gates or channels or aspects somewhere. We all have aspects. So how are you here to lead? You're here 
if you're a generator, you're here to know yourself so thoroughly that you only do what you love doing that fills you up with light and love and joy inside. The moment that you compromise yourself and have a lack of integrity with your own energetic resource, that's where you're spiraling down into something that is not fun for you, into frustration, stuckness, any kind of discomfort whatever else happens to be in your design that you might show up with, okay? So make sure that you really, really, really live your design. Doesn't matter what your design is. What matters is how you live it so that you can become yourself. Now, the moment that you live out your own nature and you enter into life correctly, this is the moment you get what is correct for you, the correct career, the correct relationships. It doesn't matter whether you're a success or not. It really doesn't. There will be no suffering despite your state. You will be living out your nature and it will be clear to you that what is there for you is right for you, whatever it might be. There will be no part of you that says, I wish I could be this or I wish I could be that. Can, I can remember. Can you, you might identify with this. Can you remember where the mind looks out there and says, I want to be that. I wish I were that. I could have had that. And why don't I have that? As an unconscious defined G center person, my identity function is unconscious. So my mind was always measuring, comparing, wishing that I could have this or that that wasn't what my life was. So that goes away when you decondition enough to be fully present and love the life, the body, the body that you live in. It goes away. It can. Just trust in the process, okay? Live your design. If you're not at seven years yet, watch how things change because they will for you if you dedicate yourself to this experiment. Surrendering to your process means that you're going to align yourself to your highest potential, your alignment with your spirit, your source, your success if you're a projector, your satisfaction if you're a generator, your peace if you're a manifester, your awe, surprise, wonderment if you're a reflector. All of those are signposts of each of our individual unique frequency, the essence of our spirit rising up from within that is designed to make its place in the world as a frequency. That's your process is surrendering to letting that just be rather than trying to force anything different than what's actually happening. Be present with the moment instead of trying to manipulate because the seven centered mindset of what we were as beings for 90,000 years, our genetic makeup for 90,000 years was that Kundalini energy going from the root up to the mind. And ah, here we have the mind, right? As its domination of its reality. That is not us. In 1781, something new happened and we are not that. Now we have energy going to our solar plexus. But this is about developing oneness, unity consciousness. This is about seeing the wholeness and the unity and the grace that follows from aligning to knowing that the other is you. That we are differentiated aspects of perspectives that can come together in unity, in harmony, in oneness, or not. That we can agree to differentiate and agree, differentiate in our opinions. We can agree to disagree. There it is. Instead of trying to be like, if you were different, I would be okay. Oh my God. No. No, nobody needs to be different. You just need to be you, whatever you is. And sometimes when we are we, it is not about getting along. It is about agreeing to disagree or maybe just really disagreeing. But there's not any kind of um, manipulation there for something to be different. There's a full acceptance of that other person being what they are and you being what you are and nobody's right or wrong. That's the key. It's not about right, wrong, good, bad. This is a very non-judgmental. It's a very amoral system because it holds a place for everybody to be what they are. And that's the kind of empowerment I need you, if you're going to be a guide, to know in integrity in your own being so that you can live and be yourself without apologies. Yeah, this is a no fault, no blame, no shame, no guilt system. No shame.
So the human design system opens the door to the potential of self-love. Finding self-love is also to find a greater love, a love for life, and a love for others through understanding. This is one of uh, Loki's, Ra's oldest son, favorite quote that I love too. Throughout living your design and seeing yourself and coming to recognize your type and profile and coming to understand how you can live out your own nature, pay attention to the importance of that in your relationship with others. This is so key. So many of the difficulties in this life are because we have great difficulties in our relationships, whether they are career or personal relationships. What is true for the individual, a lack of understanding about their own nature, is true for relationships as well. Relationships operate out of genetic imperatives and they have their own rules. So that's one of the things I'm going to help you with in this, is to help you understand particularly your relationships with your clients, okay, with your customers, the people who are in your life, in your process. Now, in our class, you might not have any yet but we can take a look at your family members if you're having difficulty to help you understand the relationship dynamics and I'll have some video trainings for you to watch as well. I want to help you remember that you can trust your strategy and authority. If things come to you, you will be able to guide their process. Do not be racked with doubt or guilt or shame or blame or any of that if you're sitting there with a client and they're presenting to you something that you just don't know how to deal with okay now you're not a therapist right if somebody's really having strong issues you might want to find somebody to refer out you're not here to fix it for them you're here to validate the mechanics and to help them find their own truth to help them find their path through their strategy and honoring their authority. I saw a little uh, chat here I want to. Yes, it's so relieving to know your own design. Thank you for sharing that, Marlene. It is relieving. It helps. It helps us so much. So success begins with that first step. Remember that first step where you got into human design? You got into human design, somebody invited you in, you found out, oh my God. This begins your process of success, and it is about knowing yourself, knowing your mechanics, and trusting that process. So that's what I'd like to invite you to contemplate. This human design system, I borrowed this phrase from Vedic astrology, the science of light. This human design system helps you define the light, see the shadows, and hold in a space of integrity that you are on path and purpose, that you don't need to go seeking your path or your purpose, that actually you begin to live that the closer and closer you come to holding that space of vibrational frequency that is in alignment with your highest self. You are already that. It just becomes peeling away the layers and layers of the misidentification of your mind with the process of conditioning. And you can do that for your students too but, you, too, but you have to walk this path first. You're the perfect guide for those who resonate with you, whether they're going to be having emotional wisdom or manifestation and anger, whether they have self-empowerment, following their own convictions no matter what, centering within on their own unique process of identification of self, whether they have survival instincts, whether they're about mutative power, about bringing something new out from alignment from within. Maybe they have a really struggle-filled, you know, tenacious strength in this life that you need to help empower them to follow and to negate any dissonance from outside where people say, why are you different? Don't do that. Because that's what happened to us as children. People go around thinking that they have to help the child fit in rather than stand out as themselves. Well-meaning parents might have conditioned the child to think that there was something wrong or bad with their definition, and this is the most common sickness that I see, is people coming to us with an alignment to there's something bad or wrong about me, and it's coming from whatever the definition is. Because people have been pointing at it, especially when it's defined in individual circuitry like this people will go, why are you like that? Why are you so deaf? Why are you not listening to me? Why aren't you paying attention? Well, because they're not designed to. So you can power empower your clients, your students, to be able to know themselves so deeply 
And on this slide, we have all the 64 gates, the I Ching, the Rave I Ching label, and the, the gate of what we also describe it as. So if it's right for you to start to memorize this, this can really help you in your process, okay? And over time, as you continue to explain, the most important thing is to really get the fears and we're going to make sure that you really know these like the back of your hands because those are the things that are keeping people from aligning with their true self because they're ruled by fears. Human beings are ruled by fear because for 90,000 years, fear was the operative mechanism that controlled humanity. That people in power use that fear to control and lord over and rule humanity. So that's what we need to get them out of, getting out of those fears so that you can empower their authority. Now here's something that I'd like to share with you that hopefully will start to resonate with you the further and further you get on your human design path of deconditioning. Whether you're gonna be a professional or not, you know you're waking up from the thrall of conditioning when you can see how your thoughts are programmed how they try to manipulate you or others. You're de deconditioning when you don't act on or believe the mind's storyline, which always leads you to suffering. Get this, what Ross says, only the not self suffers. Only the not self suffers. The awakened nine centered being looks, sees, accepts things as they are. Instead of living in a lie, an illusion of mind, it looks sees, accepts things as they are. It takes time according to its design to honor its own process, speaks its truth without needing justification. Yeah, holding boundaries where it needs to. It does not try to interpret the motives or reality of another. Here's a big key. You know how people going or go around saying, you should do this, or I bet she said that because of this. The mind, the not self mind, looks for reasons. And here's the sun earth in gate uh, six, 6 and 36. Crisis and conflict arise from trying to blame, shame, fault, guilt, and project because of insecurities of self to make oneself feel better. The not self projects and the not self labels and the not self tries to manipulate reality to make itself feel better. Okay, so instead of needing justification and trying to distort reality to fit your illusion of what you think should be, you ask and you allow unique perspectives. You don't second guess yourself. You don't degrade your own value in being and you don't degrade the value in someone else's being. Okay, you find yourself doing that, that's the not self mind. You respect other people's boundaries without making demands, accusations, exploitations, cursing at people. You ask about others' experiences. You have an open mind to see other people's perceptions are designed to be vastly different. Now here's the other thing. The nine-centered being is drawn to those of like vibration who support each other in our path of evolution and growth. We are drawn to the right people, place, and in right timing. So if you're here with me still, thank you so much for joining. I hope that that helps you in your path and on your journey of victory, of learning to be yourself in the human design system. And I want to uh, pause for a moment, see if there's any questions. And for those of you who are students who are journeying on with me, you can, of course, um, stay a little bit later so that we can um, dialogue about anything else if you need to, and I'll stop the, the live broadcast.